Hello students. In today's lecture, we will be solving the example number 7 from our chapter. This example is based on the application of Wheatstone Bridge. So let's start. The four arms of the Wheatstone Bridge have following resistance. The arm AB have 100 ohms, BC 10 ohms, CD 5 ohms and DA 60 ohms. These are the value of resistors attached in these respective arms. Next to it, a galvanometer having the resistance of 15 ohm is connected across the diagonal BD. Calculate the current through the galvanometer when a potential difference of 10 V is maintained across A and C. See over here, A and C, we have applied a potential and these arms are having resistance. This galvanometer inside is diagonal and having a resistance value of 15 ohms. So this question will be solved using the Kirchhoff's second rule. Okay, Kirchhoff's loop rule. Okay, now see over here, there is some current I flowing through this circuit. See, here is this I current flowing through this circuit and this current is due to this potential of 10 volt. When this current is coming at junction A, this is divided into I1 and I2. This I current is divided into I1 and I2 at junction A. This is based on the Kirchhoff's junction rule. Now at junction B, the same I1 current is divided into two components. One is IG current due to the galvanometer or the current which is passing through the galvanometer. We didn't give this current as I3. Instead, we just mentioned it at, as IG. That is current flowing through the galvanometer and the remaining current is flowing through the arm BC which is I1 minus current flowing through the galvanometer. That is the remaining current which is flowing through this arm of BC. Now next to it C here C. C will also have the same current no 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 C won't have the same current as there is another junction of C one is one loop connected is this another loop connected is this and third loop is connected over here for knowing determining what is the current flowing through the dc we have to sum up i2 plus i g will give us the current flowing through 5 ohm of resistance okay so there are two loops i'll rub everything this was the understanding of flow of current, how the current is flowing and how we have segregated this current. Okay, now we will understand what all loops we will be considering for solving our question. First loop which we are going to consider is this triangle. Okay, A, B, D, that is the triangle, triangle A, B, D. And when we will consider the loop, loop is always closed. We will write A, B, D, A. Okay. So that is one loop. And the second loop which we are going to consider will be the second triangle, this one. B, C, D, B. B, C, D, B. Okay. Again, another closed loop. And in the end, in the end, we will consider a loop which will be including this okay this voltage source this register and this register this will be the another loop which will be a we will consider this as a dash this as c dash for your understanding okay this is for the understanding there is no need to put it as a dash and c dash a dash because i have made it in the rectangular form I am considering this can be directly connected like this also with the battery okay it doesn't need to be in a shape battery can be connected anyhow 
but as I have given the shape, I am considering it. So the another loop which we will be considering will be A A dash C dash C D A. Okay, this whole loop I'll color it up with a highlighter. This will be the loop which we will be considering. Okay, this loop will be considered. Fine. Hope you understood. First will be the yellow one. Yellow one is the loop number one. Green one is the loop number two. And red one is the loop uh, loop number three. Yellow loop one. Green loop two. And red loop three. This is for understanding. You should never highlight the loops. Okay. I am highlighting in this video to make you understand which loop is taken as the first one, second one, third one and I, how I have decided to take a loop. Okay. So next step is from these loops we have to find out the corresponding equation which will be helping us to find the current which is flowing through the galvanometer. Okay. I'll just clean it up so that we'll have a better space to understand how we are solving our problem. Hope you have understood about the loop and the junctions, division of currents. Okay. Now we will move on the loop number one. This is our loop. Okay. Loop number one. B A D B. Okay. From here, see, I am highlighting I1 is going through 100 ohm. So, this resistor into current will give us voltage. In this loop, we are always using the voltage. So, this resistor multiplied with the current it is passing. That is 100 I. Next, second is from B to D. The current flowing is IG and the amount of resistance galvanometer is having is equals to 15 ohm. So, IG into 15. Next is in the arm AD, 60 ohm into I2, the current flowing through it. So, if we are considering one direction like this, this is clockwise direction. See, direction of this flow of current is in this direction along with this triangle. This is flowing in this direction and this I2 is flowing in the opposite direction. In the opposite direction. That's why I2 is negative. If current is flowing in a predecided loop direction it will be taken as positive otherwise we will take it as negative Now we will solve it. The whole equation is common and we can divide it with 5. Then we can divide it with 3. No, we can divide it with 5. That is the only division we can do over here. Dividing it with 5, we will get this equation and we will term this equation. See, this equation, we cannot make it more simpler than it is already. So we will keep it as equation number one and we will move on to the next mesh or the loop. Okay. So next loop is B, C, D. Next loop is B, C, D. 
see now again we have to predecide a loop direction and i am deciding that loop should go again clockwise okay so now if we see this current is flowing in the same direction this will give us positive this and this are moving in the negative opposite direction this will give us negative this direction and this direction is also opposite so here also we will get negative so 15 ig that will be in minus this will be in plus 10 into i1 minus ig then this will be 5 minus 5 into i2 plus ig i2 plus ig we will open it up and solve after solving we will get this equation how did we solve it that will be 10 i1 minus 10 ig minus 15 ig then minus 5 i2 minus 5 ig okay so it will ig ig and ig it will give us 10 i1 minus 30 ig minus 5 i2 equals to 0 this whole equation will be divided by 5 will be divided by 5 we will get 2 i1 minus 6 ig minus i2 equals to 0 this is the final equation that's how the equation is derived so we will term it as our second equation now we will consider the down mesh the mesh which is made like this where we are having a connected battery okay the current flowing through here is i2 and current flowing through here is i2 plus ig and current is flowing like this we will take a loop where the current is flowing like this so all these currents are flowing in the same direction so all the values will be positive so we have 60 i2 plus 5 into i2 plus ig which is giving us 10 over here we are having a resistance of 60 over here we are having a resistance of 5 okay again this 10 is coming from the voltage applied voltage applied we will solve it uh, it and we will get the solute like solved equation as 13 i2 plus ig equals to 2 okay now we got three equations we got three equations these three equations on further solve if we are solving them further we will be getting first equation which we have multiplied with 10 we got this okay now we have solved the equation number one and this equation number four like this like let's write up all these equations at one place and then we will solve it what i just thought is uh, let's uh, write up all these equation okay our equation number one two and three from three different loops we got three different equations so let's write up all these equations together so that we are not getting confused okay this is our equation number one now we have this 2i1 minus 6ig minus i2 equals to 0 this is equation number 2 and the third equation is 13 i2 plus ig which is equals to 2 now we got all these three equations we will multiply this equation with 10 what we will get is 20 i1 minus 6 ig 60 ig minus 10 i2 equals to 0 this is our fourth equation now we will take this equation over here to solve okay first of all i will write this equation as such equation number one as such ig 
minus 12 i2 equals to 0. Now I will change this sign. I will subtract these two equations. Subtract. Once I am subtracting, the sign will change. All these signs will change. Okay. Now this and this will get cancelled out. Here we will get minus 63 ig. And here we will get plus 2 i2 which is equals to 0. If I am solving this equation, I will get 2 i2 equals to 63 ig i2 equals to 63 ig upon 2. Okay. Now, I have got this as the equation number 5. This is equation number 4. This is equation number 5. Now, what I am I going to do is substituting equation number 5 in 3 okay we are having 13 i2 plus ig equals to 2 this is our third equation now i will substitute the value of i2 in this equation okay 13 into 63 upon 2 ig plus ig equals to 2 this will give us 819ig upon 2 plus ig equals to 2. I will take the ig common. ig equals to 819 upon 2 plus 1 equals to 2. Then it will be ig into 819 plus 2 upon 2 equals to 2. Ig equals to 821 upon 2 equals to 2. Ig into 821 equals to 4. Ig equals to 4 divided by 821 and Ig equals to 0 0.00487 amperes. Ig equals to 4.87 milliamperes. That is the current flowing through current flowing through the diagonal attached galvanometer. Okay. So we will see our last page once again. This is a detailed solving or explanation in these two slides. We will see how I have uh, solved it in my notes. So see this was for the third mash and then we multiplied it with the 10. We got this equation solved it with equation number 1. From that equation, we found the value of I2, which we substituted in this third equation. And from this third equation, we derived the value of Ig. We got the value of galvanometer current, which is 4.87 milliampere. So I just hope you understood this example question. This was quite easy understanding and was having these Kirchhoff's application along with the Wheatstone Bridge application. So this is one of the combo question which gives you the insight of the previously taught two lectures. So that's all for today's lecture. And this is the last question, last exemplar question from the chapter number three. Have a good day. Bye bye.